My name is Michael. And my name is Mirjana. We are here to talk about the seven stages of grief today. It's connected to the awakening phase and many times there's a lot of confusion and you can even get stuck in one of the stages and never move on from there. So that's why we're going to talk about the stages today, today and in the end we will show you exactly what possibilities that is possible when you go through this. So in the first stage it's called chalk. So imagine you have a loved one, you have a cat, you have a dog, you have some a person or something that you love dearly and all of a sudden that is taken away from you. Most of us go into shock and we don't really understand what goes on and we are like, what is this actually? Uh, you can never really prepare yourself from death or when someone leaves or when a when you when you have a cat or a dog or any family member that will leave you and the amount of grief and loss it's different to everyone so you cannot really compare one journey to the other because you never know what will come up for you in this moment in this process there could be a lot of like starting to numb yourself because when a lot of these emotions starts to come up we find ways to cope and hear addictions and other eating disorders and things might appear and we don't really know why we can gain weight and such acceptance even if it's hard is one of the key things to really like okay I might be in chalk right now I don't even understand it but I'm gonna have a look at it so before I get into step two I just want to say that Grief is not a process that's specific to somebody dying necessarily. You can be grieving a relationship. You can be grieving your old life that maybe you've outgrown as part of the spiritual awakening process. You can grieve a community, a job, your family. Although a lot of the times it is related to death, it's not necessarily that way. So the second stage of grief is called denial. And denial is where we basically want to bury our head in the sand and we don't want to deal with the grief because it feels so overwhelming. So we think that if we push it away, we will actually save ourselves from the pain and the overwhelm of having to confront reality. But what we don't realize is that we're actually just prolonging the process. This is something that happens unconsciously. But in this stage of denial, a lot of the times people continue to be stuck as they often get in the shock instead of actually making everything easier for themselves, they're making it harder for themselves. Something that can happen in this stage is that we can feel really foggy, like our brain isn't all there or like we're kind of half awake, half awake, half asleep. We can also just feel chronic fatigue, lack of energy, because what we don't realize is that even though our mind, our conscious mind, is not allowing us to process that grief, we still have this energy hemorrhage that is going towards that grief that is occupying a lot of our life force. The denial stage can you know, the amount of time that it lasts really varies for everyone, but it's important to move past this stage in order to continue the healing process. In the denial phase, we often also romanticize whatever it is that we are grieving. So maybe like we're grieving our old friends that we've now outgrown in our awakening and we, we kind of romanticize that it was so much better than it was or maybe we're grieving our parents and we can kind of romanticize that they were so much uh, that there were happier times than maybe there actually were because we just we don't want to deal with this pain and then we come to a stage which is n number three and that's anger and I remember here from my own process that in this stage there was a lot of like Yes, it was great that he died because I fucking hated him. And he was like, when you were like, wow. And I remember being so angry and I didn't really, people wanted to help me, but I was like, no, don't touch me. There's nothing wrong with me. Don't come here. I, I was really like closed down and I was really angry and fr frustrated because in the bottom, I felt 
abandoned and really sad. But here I projected that anger onto others. And it's a really natural state where, because anger is sadness in the bottom. And sometimes we have even shame that covers the sadness. So we can't really express the sadness. That's why all this anger comes up. And in this case, I was really angry at my father that he left. And then I was angry that he didn't do what he was supposed to do. And like, accordingly to me. And there was a lot of things that I was angry about. And I spoke it out to people. And I made sure I told them how fucking stupid he was and all of these things I also remember that I could see him like I saw people on the street I was like angry and then I thought I saw my father and then he wasn't I walked up to him and grabbed him and then it was not him and then I and I walked around and I can like hear sometimes even or I can see or it was really strange and it can be a really like confusing you can think that you're even losing your mind at the same time, you're like angry. We've really been making an attempt at this point to divorce ourselves from uh, this experience, which is why we've gone into anger. And that leads us to step four, which is bargaining. In the bargaining stage, you can do one of two things. One, you can either start bargaining with the universe as though there's a source outside of you. Or... You can start bargaining with yourself, like maybe I could have done things differently, maybe I should have done it this way, maybe, 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 maybe. And there's a lot of mental acrobatics and mental conjecture that happens in this time, a lot of self-doubt and questioning. And also when you are trying to bargain with the universe, it's like a lot of victimhood, like why is this happening to me? What, what did I do to deserve this? Well, if I do this, you know, will, will something better happen now? Or some people actually just get entirely disillusioned with the universe altogether. And they're like, I don't believe in a source that could have allowed this to happen. Especially, for example, if the death was unexpected, then this can come with a lot of um, resentment towards the universe about this process. And... This bargaining stage can really come from a place of not accepting, you know, whether it is that you are grieving a person or a community or a job or a relationship, that nothing can really be taken away from you and that death is just part of life. And it's all, you know, this eternal game that never ends. But because in that moment, you know, when we face the death of our loved ones, we have to confront our own mortality as well. And that can be extremely scary and challenging, which is why we try to avoid it and why we try to do this bargaining phase um, as a way to really avoid the actual feelings that lie underneath, which is what comes in the next step. And then we come to step number five, which is depression. And in this phase, it can be really dark and nasty. In this phase, I remember I couldn't really see a way out. It was I was like really shutting myself in. I was listening to music that made me sad. And in this place, I could like it was like I went in and I never wanted to come out. There can be there can be a lot of anxiety. There can be a lot of sadness that either comes up or not. It all depends on where you are in the situation. For me, I remember I I started to cry and then it just never ended. Like I was all isolated, didn't talk to anyone, and I sat in my basement. I cried for a couple of years. I was like there was so much coming out, coming out, coming out, and I couldn't see anything fun. I didn't want to do anything. Like, no one could get me out of there except myself in that moment. Listening to music, I remember I listened to some songs and I, like, I tried to remember him and I kind of, like, I started to almost, like, feel him in different types of, like, in songs and in different situations. Also, here comes a lot of, like, questioning of what is real, do we really die, and a lot of that. And spirituality actually came to me in this phase where I was depressed. Where I was like, maybe you're not really dead. Maybe you're dead, but your physical body is not here. But actually, you're with me some, somehow. And I actually started to open up things that I never done before. It's not only about like super negative stuff. What I remember that actually gave me juice is the belief that there is something else after death. And we're not really 
like the physical body is dead, but we are our soul or whatever you want to call it is still there. And parts of you can, in my hallucination at least, communicate with that and and that there's something on the other side. Step six is called acceptance and hope. And by this point, you can see that grief is a process that is so beautiful actually because it takes you through the whole range of human emotions. And in that way, it's really this initiation because all of these emotions we're going to have to move through you at some point anyway. So in this phase of acceptance and hope, you, you know, it feels like you've been like submerged in this world of feelings, but you get to come out for air. And this is really through a process of being surrendered. So a lot of the times in life, people are like, yeah, I surrender. I decided to surrender. No, that's not what happens. We don't decide to surrender, we get surrendered. And through getting surrendered, then we find acceptance and hope because we lay down our arms, we end the fight really in this case with our own feelings and with the chaos of the human experience and we begin to accept it. And through that acceptance, then we are able to find some hopefulness because there's one thing that is the actual pain or loss of whatever it is that we're grieving, but then through all of these mechanisms, we actually create a bunch of secondary processes, secondary additional pain to that original loss. And at this point, we can just accept that it is what it is and that as painful as it has been, there is also some beauty in it because this is just a part of life. And through that, you're able to begin finding peace. Now, it's normal in this phase to, you come up for air and you have maybe a little bit of acceptance and hope, and then maybe you go back into depression. Maybe you even go back into anger, and then you go back to acceptance and hope because like the spiritual awakening process, it's not linear, and that's just part of being here on Earth in Earth School. And in this stage, what I found out to be the most powerful thing that ever served me when I went through this process is that I can, when I can turn the worst scenario into my best scenario, when I can accept and I can see how much it actually benefited me, that he gave his life for me so I can start to live my life. When I can use all of that pain, turn it into wisdom and actually say, what did I learn from this? Who did I become as a human when I went through the process of grief? How strong did I get? And when the worst thing that already happened, there's nothing else I can't do if I gone through this. Because this process can be extremely hard mentally and emotionally. And when you've gone through this, all of a sudden, like I wrote a whole book on it, like how to uh, turn any negative to positive. I used to say that like when you can turn this around, you can basically turn anything around and all of a sudden you have a, such a power and you can go do whatever you want and do anything at any point because you already experienced the worst case scenario. So it doesn't really stop at this point. The griefing process can go on. And as Mirjana said, it goes back and forth and kind of like it does this. And we have to learn how to express it over time. For me, I can just say it took me almost between eight and 10 years to really get out of the whole process. And I was, I didn't know this when I went into it. So if I just knew the steps, I could kind of like move on faster. But at that point, I had no idea. So I was like back and forth, back and forth, here and there, and then all of a sudden it's nice. And then like back in crying for days by myself and then out again. So when we really get to learn how to express it in a healthy and good and beautiful way and see that I actually like crying now these days, show you another way in life where you are more empowered than ever. And also if you need help, comment down below, reach out to us if you have questions 
or ask a friend, go to a coach, meet a psychotherapist or whatever you do. If you're feeling that it's like overwhelming, go seek someone that can be there for you. And if you're grieving, just remember this is a part of being human and in a way you're actually getting up leveled, you're getting to awaken all of these feelings that are inside of you that you did come to experience and if it feels really chaotic and messy we are here for you and comment below we'd love to hear your story